Hello, I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my video series, which explores the triumphant victory of Donald John Trump to the office of President of the United States of America. One of the main reasons why Trump was successful was because the voters considered him a political outsider. Voters have become disillusioned and upset and frustrated with career politicians who have been corrupted by the very nature of their profession. Before the 2016 election cycle, I probably would have agreed with such voters. Now that I've experienced the 2016 election cycle, I've changed my mind. While Donald Trump isn't a corrupt politician, he's certainly a corrupt businessman. The voters traded one form of corruption for another. And I'm sorry, but that just doesn't make sense. Or does it? The title of this video is Corrupt by Any Other Noun. It is a reference to one of the famous lines from the Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet play. Wouldn't a rose by any other name smell as sweet? The famous line contemplates the notion that all things maintain their qualities no matter how they are labeled. If you call a boulder a feather, or a tree a mosquito, or a magazine a firecracker, all you've done is give the Oxford English Dictionary personnel a headache. The items themselves are still the same. For my video title, the word corrupt remains the same adjective and meaning. The noun the adjective describes shall change. The resulting switch leads to the same basic comparisons. If we place the adjective corrupt before nouns like teacher, priest, lawyer, athlete, judge, or police officer, then those people are all horrible at their professions. If we elect a corrupt businessman instead of a corrupt politician, then have we actually improved our situation? I think not. If you want to attempt to defend Trump and claim that he wasn't corrupt, then you'd be wasting your time. The man was certainly corrupt. He and his organization at the time of the election process were involved in over 400 lawsuits against them. He has been involved with at least six bankruptcies. There are still numerous laborers that haven't been paid for their work protesting outside of his businesses. He is being audited by the IRS. He refused to surrender his income tax information. Say you what you will about the other corrupt politicians that ran for the office, at least they all submitted their tax information. Trump refused, not even to confirm how smart he was about knowing tax laws. He managed to settle the Trump University lawsuit, but he still lied about the settlement to the public. He tweeted that he settled for a small percentage of the requested amount. The lawsuit was for $40 million. He settled for $25 million. That's more than half. That is not a small percentage. It seems Trump is not only a compulsive liar, but isn't able to do basic math either. Perhaps that is why he refused to share his income tax information. Trump demanded that President Obama release his birth certificate. Maybe we should demand Trump release his high school diploma. I said that Trump was a compulsive liar. That was not a baseless insult. One of the reasons why Hillary Clinton and the other politicians failed to sway voters was the issue of trust. The voters claimed that they couldn't trust Hillary and the other politicians. It's one thing to be jaded from the political system, but how could the voters trust Trump? Along with the previous negative business history that I mentioned, Trump had an astronomical lying percentage. The website PolitiFact monitors elected officials and candidates for truthfulness. They divide the statements by the candidates among six categories. True, mostly true, half true, mostly false, false, and pots on fire. I examined the latter three of those categories, the negative listings. Between Marco Rubio, Chris Christie, Ted Cruz, Jeb Bush, Hillary Clinton, and Bernie Sanders, their average was 37.8%. That's a pretty dubious collective score. 
what was Donald Trump's score? 70.00%. I'm not making that up. 70%. Nearly twice as much as any of the candidates. And it's not like we really need PolitiFact to verify Trump's lying. The man spread so much false information that even Republican outlets like Fox News had to offer corrections and disavow his claims. Trump would lie as if Google or video te technology didn't exist. Several of his claims could be disproved by a two-minute internet search. Trump also constantly made stuff up. He claimed that the NFL sent him a letter to discourage a Republican debate because it would interfere with ratings. The NFL responded that no such communication was made. After Trump lost the first presidential debate, he tried to claim that the CBS network said that he won. The CBS network responded that they didn't conduct any survey about the debate at all. If Trump wasn't lying, distorting information, or making up falsehoods, then he was constantly complaining or making excuses. He complained that the election cycle was rigged. He complained that moderators treated him unfairly, some of them with blood coming out of their wherevers. He complained that media was representing him unfairly. He's had excuses about bad earpieces and bad microphones. He even complained about Saturday Night Live, despite the fact that he hosted the show three times. Clearly, the man can't handle criticism unless he's the one making the jokes. And don't get me started with his outbursts of wrong, wrong, wrong. During the campaign, I began to wonder if Trump suffered from some kind of memory disability, like Dory from the Finding Nemo franchise. Trump would either change positions or deny his past actions, like that cheating boyfriend in the song, It Wasn't Me, by Shaggy. Back on the subject of Saturday Night Live, each time Trump would say, believe me, I would think of the John Lovitz character. Yeah, that's the ticket. Several people, including Trump supporters, believe that many of Trump's controversial ideas are just rhetoric to appeal to his base. They believe he won't actually do several of the outrageous proposals while in the office. I I'm sorry, but isn't that the very definition of pandering? Isn't saying stuff just to get elected one of the things that the voting public doesn't like about politicians? The public is tired of being pandered to, but they're going to support a person they believe is pandering to them? How does that make any sense? Oh, and have you noticed that I have not touched on his allegations of sexual misconduct? I have brought up his racist, xenophobic, or homophobic allegations either? I could go into those subjects, but I think I've more than proved my point. Donald Trump lied, complained, made up excuses, denied his actions, and could not handle criticism and pandered to his audience. And the voters thought he was more trustworthy than the politicians. The voters couldn't trust Hillary Clinton or any other Republican candidates, but Trump? was somebody they could place their faith in? Trump wasn't a corrupt politician, but he was clearly corrupt in all matters that count. The voters still favored him. They traded one form of corruption for another. That didn't make sense. After thinking about this issue for a long while, I believe there are two reasons why the voters wound up trusting Trump. First, Donald Trump is a marvelous salesman. Despite the audit, lawsuits, bankruptcies, and allegations against social progress, he has built his reputation and brand into a global economic powerhouse. An excellent salesman can convince a customer to buy or invest in a product or service regardless if the customer thinks it would be a wise choice. The salesman's charisma, persuasiveness, and showmanship override the customer's rational thinking. Donald Trump did this with his supporters. He sold them on the idea that only he could bring back their jobs, 
secure the borders, harshly deal with terrorism, and so on and so on. His campaign slogan was perfect. Make America great again. Trump promised to make life as joyous and stable as his supporters thought it used to be. Of course, if the customers could take a solid break from the salesman to actually contemplate and dissect the sales pitch and the product that was being offered to them, then it is likely that the customer wouldn't agree to the offer and walk away. Trump's antics, both positive and negative, kept the voting public in the razzle-dazzle of his salesman's aura. Trump was everywhere all the time. He campaigned nonstop in the quote-unquote biased media, granting him unlimited free publicity. It is my firm belief that if voters could have had a serious rest period from Trump during the election cycle, several of his supporters wouldn't agree to his offer and walk away. The second reason why I believe the voter support makes sense comes from the advice I learned from the original Thundercats cartoon. Better to have an honest enemy than a false friend. I don't know if that quote comes from a source before Thundercats. It's the only place I've heard it, so I'm giving the show credit. As I stated at the beginning of this video, the very nature of politics breeds corruption. In an internet forum, I told my friends, you can be a very honest politician, you can be a very successful politician, but it is almost impossible to be a very successful, honest politician. As much as I love Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, and Hillary Clinton, I always acknowledge that they are corrupt in some form or another. I also have a great appreciation for the Bush family, and they certainly have a dubious track record. The sad truth is, it is nearly impossible to reach that level of success in government without getting dirt on one's face and possibly blood on one's hands. Because of the corruptible nature of politics, everyone in that field can be seen as a false friend. The voters were sick of false friends. Donald Trump, on the other hand, was an honest enemy. During the campaign trail, I remember a great statement by a Trump supporter that was interviewed at one of his rallies. She said, the man's a total asshole, but I like what it says. I'm going to vote for him. I love that statement. I think it captures the mindset of several voters. Trump might not be honest and non-corrupted in the traditional sense, but he has come off as authentic. The other politicians might be terrible people. Trump is clearly a terrible person. As many supporters claim, Trump tells it like it is and has no filter. The interviewed woman understood that she was investing because of the salesmanship more than what Trump was actually selling. If more voters were like that intelligent woman, then I think the entire election cycle would have been much different. Although several folks like her don't mind settling for more sizzle than steak, I'd imagine the overall majority of people want an excellent steak. For the majority of people, the fancy gift wrapping is irrelevant. The contents of the box is what's important. And unless it's some kind of theme park attraction, most people don't enjoy being taken for a ride. Time will reveal which policies Trump will actually implement. Time will reveal which issues that Trump was serious about and which were just hot air pandering. Time will tell if the supporters contracted a serious case of buyer's remorse. For now, I hold the belief that voters' decision to escape the corruption of politicians by electing a corrupt businessman doesn't make sense. If you, the YouTube viewer, voted for Trump, I'm sure that your vote made sense at the time. But now that the campaign is ended, you've signed the deal, and you've had time to contemplate your investment have you experienced any buyer's remorse? Does your vote still make sense to you? When it comes to voting, all sales are final. You can't return or exchange your vote. You can't go back to the store, buy something that you actually want, and toss that bad decision up into the attic. You can't sell the bad decision on eBay.
Therefore, however you voted in the 2016 election cycle, I hope it's something that you'll be able to be proud of for the foreseeable future. All right, thank you very much for watching this video. Please like and share this video. Please share your comments in the comment section. Please be respectful in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, find inspiration everywhere.